Welcome to the Shaper Tools AirCut demonstration. So the idea here is you've uh, taken Origin out of the box. Uh, it's arrived, it's the evening, and we don't want to make any noise. So we're going to unplug the spindle and we've taken the uh, cutter out. With the spindle unplugged and uh, no cutter installed, now we're going to set about just experimenting with a, uh, with a file we've dropped on a uh, thumb drive. There's no chance of making any noise or doing any damage uh, to your work surface. We can experiment with, uh, with Origin in this state and uh, get used to all of the UI um, and the behavior we should expect um, when we approach each type of cut. So uh, we'll dig in there now and take a look. Okay, we've booted up Origin for the first time. Uh, we're going to run through the onboarding process, uh, getting connected to the Wi-Fi and uh, linking our Shaper Hub account so that we can access any files uh, we want to share or download on the cloud. Um, and we'll do that now. We'll uh, continue. Uh, this first presents us with the uh, available Wi-Fi network. So we're going to choose one to log into and then we'll enter the password. Uh, so uh, you can turn on show or hide and then hit the done button, uh, then connect. So it will now connect to that network um, and it presents you with the option of linking your account. So uh, once again, you can skip this if, uh, if you want to, or uh, you can log in or create an account live on the tool right here. Um, so that's just enter your data, the password you want, and uh, sign into that. Um, and then I'll enter my one here. And then your password. You can show that, hide it, done, and log in and it's now going to show you the onboarding information. So this is just a little reminder uh, to remove the little blue transport lock that stops the uh, spindle moving around. Uh, always put that in place for transporting origin. Um, and this is a uh, link to the uh, Shaper Tools start page. So this will uh, provide you with access to Shaper Hub and all the files you're going to want to be uh, downloading and cutting when you're first getting accustomed to the tool. There's also a bunch of uh, tutorials and a forum uh, to get you uh, connected to the community and uh, making the most of Origin. So we'll skip that. And now we're set up. It's uh, telling us there's no tape, so we'll move Origin to the side and start taping up our workspace. Okay, so the first thing we do when kicking off an Origin project is to tape up our workspace. So uh, this is where we lay down tape uh, north of where we intend to cut. So if I intend to cut down here, I put some tape north of there and the camera will look forward at that and be able to track its position. Um, you'll notice these ones are placed about four inches apart, four inch centers. Uh, that's a good approximate start. Um, here's an example of tape put at an angle. It doesn't matter if it's, if it's dead straight linear to one another. The only thing it's interested in is where these complete markers are. So it uses them as like a wayfinding map uh, later. So when you do your scan, that locks in what you see through the viewport at the time of scanning. So uh, there we go. And you'll see I'm just dropping them down at any angle um, and that should be good to go. So with this tape field, it's all on one plane. That's one of the assumptions uh, our computer vision system makes is that all the tape exists on a single flat surface. So you wouldn't put tape at varying heights on various uh, panels. It all needs to be on one panel and you need to make sure it doesn't move uh, relative to what you're cutting. Um, so if you had a, a strip of ply here and another one here, you'd have to clamp them very firmly to make sure that this one doesn't slide relative to the other one. That would, uh, that would confuse our uh, computer vision system. Okay, so when we uh, first bring Origin onto the scene, it's going to say uh, no tape found. So uh, first we're going to point it at our tape, our tape field. So uh, this is all on a flat plane um, and you can see through the, the actual camera at this stage. We, uh, we don't look through the camera when we're cutting. We look at the, uh, the big image we're about to make by stitching together uh, a scan of all of this tape.
So we'll do that now. So we go new scan, we're in scan mode here. New scan, and we're going to start scan by pressing the green button there as well. So uh, I'm just moving around and you'll see I'm building up this big image, this map of where all these markers are. You'll see them turning blue as they are recognized. So I'm keeping my uh, unit on the surface uh, and then I'll hit the finish button. So you'll see all the images stitched together there. That's just a quick stitch. Now it's going through and doing a very accurate uh, stitching and surveying of all those points. So uh, this image that we've just created is basically what we see through the viewport from this point on. So if you were to draw something on the surface now, you wouldn't see it. So here we go. We're now looking down through where the actual center of the spindle is. So. Uh, you see the center of the screen has some little crosshairs and a dot. The dot is actually the very center of the cutter. I zoom out one step, that's a double click on the screen, anywhere in the sort of center area. And you'll see the tape that's been recognized, highlighted blue. Any partial markers remain black, so they are never contributing to our uh, position tracking. Um, so you see origin down the bottom here. So uh, double click again, we scan to our full extremities. Um, so that's the entire area of the workpiece that we can navigate within. Uh, and then you'll see that the screen, um, sorry, the camera view has a little live element uh, superimposed across the, uh, the pre-rendered uh, 3D plane. So this, most of the workpiece is a textured plane in 3D space. So it all should, ex all the tape should exist on one plane. Okay, we're about to place our uh, map of the USA. So uh, it's on this USB. We'll give you a link to that file if, uh, if you don't have it on you. So we've moved to design mode and we have, we're presented with the option of placing a file. That's what we're going to do. The other ones uh, we'll get into in other videos. They're basically on tool CAD and uh, an advanced grid and alignment tool. So uh, we'll just go straight ahead and place a file. Uh, so this is what we have on the USB. We want to uh, place this US map. We'll uh, have a link to this for the file. Um, now what's interesting is we've zoomed out to the extents of the file we're placing. Uh, the center of this cutter is actually at the bottom of this file. So if I was to place here, the bottom of Texas would align approximately with the center of this. So uh, you'll notice I can move around and uh, we're basically behaving like a big mouse at the moment. Uh, so we're just choosing where we want to place this map of America. So uh, I'm just going to put it, uh, put it down here and you see the green button says place. I could rotate it if I wanted. Um, we'll do that. So this is just 45 degrees per click. Uh, just to help out with placing it in odd orientations. So uh, if I wanted to cancel orange button and if I want to place the green button down here, I can either touch it on screen or down here. So I'm going to press the button on the handle and uh, we'll see the that place take hold. So now what's interesting is we've zoomed in and we're looking at the original scan we took. So any marks or changes we do to the workspace now will not be visible here. So I'm gonna double click to zoom out. You can see what the scan is. So everything outside of what the camera can see is, uh, is basically what we'll be viewing through the viewport. Uh, and the camera is showing us how many markers it can see uh, live there. So just keep that in mind. Um, so zooming in, uh, we're currently in design mode. It's telling us what direction we're going to cut this, but till we switch to design mode, uh, sorry, to cut mode, we don't get more detailed information. So now we're in cut mode uh, and we get all the information we need to know about how our cuts are going to behave. So first and foremost, uh, we're doing an air cut. So this uh, guarantees that A, we aren't going to be plunging our, our um, spindle into the material. We won't even turn it on. This is the button for the power to the spindle. We'll leave that off, So, and we're even unplugged. So this will be very quiet and non-destructive uh, sort of sandbox test bed. You can fool around and try anything you like here without worrying about uh, making a lot of noise or doing any damage. Um, so there's a few things that change in this viewport. Firstly, we have the, in the top uh, right here, we have the tape health meter. So you'll notice as I wipe my hand in front of the camera, uh, that deteriorates and we eventually get uh, the inability to track. So when it goes red there, if we were mid cut, uh, the spindle would uh, retract out of the material and stop cutting to protect us from uh, 
cutting random shapes. Um, that basically is telling us we can no longer track our space in 3D. So when that starts to deteriorate, you'll see if I move out here, uh, it'll, it'll drop down saying it can't see very many markers. But as I point it back towards all of my tape field, it can see well. So you just have to keep in mind where your tape is and uh, orient the camera accordingly. So that's one thing to just keep an eye out. Remember, that's what that's telling us. Okay, so uh, we're slightly zoomed in here. This is about half an inch. And you'll notice if we hover over the, the, uh, the line, it's going to show this slightly darker line and these marching, uh, marching ants, the dotted line. So the dotted line is telling us which direction it's going to cut. It's moving in a direction to avoid climb cutting. We'll get more into that when we do our actual cut. And the dark, thicker line that pops up, you'll see that pops up as we hover over, that's showing uh, how much material the cutter is going to remove. So you'll notice down here we've got a 1 16th inch cutter described. If we do this, tell it to be a quarter inch, you'll see that's changed to be a much bigger uh, amount of material it's removing. So that's a quarter inch across that, that dark gray. Um, I'll put this back to uh, 1 16th. You notice I'm just dismissing the, uh, the touch off. We don't have a cutter installed, so we don't need to, uh, to touch off to measure the height of the cutter relative to our work surface or the base of our unit. So this is an online cut. You'll notice as I hover over, the actual uh, geometry in our SVG uh, is along the center of this line. Um, we'll, we'll test some of the other line types uh, later on in this video. But yeah, that's what that's describing there. And that's, you'll see all of these were uh, described in our SVG. They're all gray strokes, which means cut on line. This is the offset button. We'll leave that at zero for this video. Uh, and then we messed around already with our cut diameter. Um, we'll leave that on 1 16th. Um, and we'll dismiss any touch-offs. If we ever wanted to measure the height of our cutter relative to the work surface, we could just hit the touch-off button and do that manually. Um, now we're ready to cut. So uh, I will move, this is behaving like a mouse. I'll move it over my line, which selects it and presents me with the option to start cutting. So uh, it's telling me if I hit the green button on the handle, uh, it's going to start cutting. So we'll do that. I'll just tap and release. And we're in an air cut. So uh, now we're seeing this blue dot start to appear. So the center of our cutter is now uh, attached to the line and uh, Origin will do everything it can to uh, stay tracking that line accurately. So I can move left and right and you'll notice the spindle uh, will move independently of the Origin unit. Um, so as I move along, uh, Origin is always trying to get that spindle to the center of my corrective uh, circle there. So uh, the next mode of interest, I can hold down the green button. See how it says auto here? That's telling me that it's going to try to get to the extents of the corrective circle uh, all on its own. So uh, it'll go as far as it can inside that range. And I can drop in and out of that mode at will. So uh, clicking it, it goes as far as it can and then returns to just trying to get to the center of the uh, cutter. So the center is described by those little crosshairs. Um, so that makes everything predictable. The one interesting thing about auto mode uh, for like rounding corners and things is it's a linear feed rate. So I can actually keep up with it and confidently cut uh, at, at a linear feed rate, which is, uh, which is a great thing to do when uh, cutting with a CNC machine. So we'll uh, retract now that uh, cut history has returned to the beginning. Uh, the cut history is the blue line, by the way. So that shows how much material was removed. You'll notice we don't see the cut material because we don't have a camera pointing in there. This is our original scan uh, with all this digital augmented data telling us uh, the current state of our workspace. Okay, we'll start messing around with some of the different uh, cut types here. So these we can all set live uh, on origin. So this is kind of great for doing uh, work in the field if you uh, change your mind about how you want to cut things. Um, so even though everything's described in our SVG file, we can go in and manipulate this uh, if we decide we want to change something. So for example, I may decide I want to cut this on the inside. So uh, I hover over the line I want to manipulate and then I go uh, choose my online and choose inside. Uh, so you'll notice the tool paths uh, change to the inside of that geometry. You'll notice this is the geometry uh, described in the SVG 
and then the dotted line in the gray is the toolpath uh, that Origin generates live. So uh, you'll notice it's changed direction. Uh, we're avoiding uh, clam cutting again. We'll describe that later. Um, so I'm just going to uh, I'm going to cut this. Uh, so so long as uh, that line exists within my corrective circle, uh, we're presented with the option of starting to cut, and uh, that's the either clicking on screen or clicking the green button on the handle. So I'll click that, we plunge. You can see it's now tracking that line. Uh, we've got a 16th inch cutter hypothetically installed. Um, so we're still doing an air cut. So it's very quiet, but this is exactly the uh, behavior you'll expect from Origin once you start actually cutting with it. So uh, that's cut uh, outside or the inside of that shape. So if you wanted to make a plug to put something inside, you would you would do a, a cut like this. Um, so we're also going to test pocket mode. So you'll notice it's now cross-hatched that center area, and we can actually move anywhere inside there, but we can't go outside the boundary. In fact, you'll notice there's a little, uh, there'll be a little border we can't go beyond. Um, so you'll see here, see how as I approach that edge, it won't let me go outside? Um, now, the idea of auto goes away in this mode. I can, I can move anywhere, but there's no specific path I have to follow. Um, so you'll see I can just zip around and uh, mill material away, but it will, uh, it will not let me go beyond that border. Um, so usually if you're doing a pocket, uh, you also have to follow up with the uh, cut interior. Um, and as an example, uh, if I was unsatisfied with how long it was going to take me to remove all that material, I could put in a uh, quarter inch cutter and just continue. So uh, I'm going to dismiss the touch off. Uh, so you'll see now there's a much larger amount of material being removed. Um, so that'll speed up that job if you had a lot to remove. So uh, that's how pocketing operates. Um, we'll move on here and try something else. Uh, we're going to look at the guide mode. So uh, this path has been described as a guide. It goes blue. Um, and you'll see whenever I hover over it, uh, it's not producing a toolpath. I, I can't actually cut this line in, in when it's in this state. So the reason we'd use a guide is if we wanted to add a little bit of documentation, uh, some reference lines, some center lines, or maybe uh, if we wanted to align to the edge of a panel, um, we could do that visually nice and quickly uh, using the guideline to uh, align to some markings on our workspace. So uh, that's actually a pretty powerful feature um, and I'll let you experiment with that. Um, next up, the only remaining one is the outside line. So uh, I'll put this back to a uh, 16th inch cutter. We're not actually changing cutters, so we're gonna dismiss the touch off option. Uh, and then I'll cut this. So you'll notice this toolpath is on the outside of this shape. So for uh, inside and outside cuts, it only makes sense when you're talking about a closed shape. Um, there's no such thing as the inside or outside of a single open line. But uh, if you have a shape like a rectangle or something that's closed, uh, you can cut on the inside or the outside of it. So. Uh, that's all the line types, and uh, that will enable you to cut most shapes you can uh, imagine with Origin.